So you've returned. While I was disturbed that you chose to defy our orders and obtain transport off Citadel Station, the matter has since been closed. It was the decision of Republic authorities that your testimony would no longer be necessary, and thus you'd be allowed to go. But as we discovered, you had already left. In some ways, it was lucky for us, avoiding a possibly embarrassing situation. Why does the Republic do anything? The head doesn't know what the feet are doing. The hands don't even know they've got fingers, let alone where they are. My opinion, they probably performed their independent investigation and figured it wasn't your fault. Anyways, you should just be glad I decided to overlook the fact you escaped arrest. Yeah, yeah. And if there's nothing else, I've got a job to do. What is it? I see. And where and when did you kill them? I see. Well, you certainly earned the bounty on those two dangerous criminals. Here it is. I think you'll find the amount more than adequate. The TSF once again thanks you for your cooperation. So you've returned. What is it? It might be helpful if I made some changes to my remote's maintenance laser to do spot repairs. That would be a welcome improvement. My combat effectiveness could be better sustained, providing an advantageous arrangement. And my miniature counterpart would finally be able to pull his weight in a fight. Right then, I'll work on it when we get back to the Hawk.
There. You should be able to do some quick fixes. You won't be able to perform serious repairs, but you should be able to patch up any broken droids. You know, I think it's time I gave your cutting laser a little boost. It works fine for repairs, but we could use your help in a firefight. Don't worry about it. We'll make sure they keep you out of their scopes. Think of it this way. You can keep Goto in line with it. Iridonian, if I might have a moment. What is it, Goto? I have spent some time in the presence of your remote, and the upgrades you have performed on him are quite adequate. I am impressed with your work, though less so with your remote itself. What's wrong with my remote? I find his use of resources, energy spent on frivolous things, to be an unsightly waste. But it is obvious you have some skill, however slight, in the upgrading of machines. I want you to provide me with similar upgrades. I should be able to do something. I will see what I can do next time I have a free moment. I dreamt of Malachor. I remember the ships, the last stand of the Republic. The tattered remnants of our fleet, the largest we could gather. But it was damaged, weakened, and vulnerable. The Mandalorians couldn't resist. They tore into us like beasts, shredding our ships to scrap as we fought back. Yet this time, there were no reinforcements for either side. Revan had been delayed out system by Mandalorian scout ships. By the time he arrived, it was too late. And beyond Malachor, there were no more Mandalorians left to die. I remember standing on the bridge with you and watching the destruction of the Republic, watching ships full of soldiers and Jedi burn and die. I remember the look you had when you turned to me. It was the longest you'd ever looked at me. You didn't say anything. Just a nod. Events moved quickly then, even in my dreams. Flashes, explosions, you falling. I could feel the pain around me. And then the memory. The drifting hulks of the Mandalorian ships. The dead. Allies. Friends. Strangers. And then the echo. Lingering. The sound I awakened to in my nightmares. Blame lies with me for creating it. The situation forced your hand. Anger forced mine. You realized that unless action was taken, the fleet would be destroyed and the Republic would fall. None of us realized the magnitude of what we unleashed. So you fought against the Mandalorians in the war? I was part of the war effort, yes. I worked as a technician, though. But you fought on the front lines. To a Mandalorian, there is honor in that. I could do without your Mandalorian honor. I saw the results of your honor. The absolute destruction your warriors brought. And look at them now. Mandalorians are little better than mercenary thugs. And what's honor to someone like that? All they care about are credits. If I were you, I'd pick your words more carefully. You fought for no cause other than to spread suffering and pain to the people you conquered. Maybe that's what it looked like to you, but that isn't why we fought. We fought for honor and glory in the heat of battle. You did nothing but murder innocents. The Republic took us too lightly. We wanted to face the full force of their army. We had to goad them to fight. That's exactly what I'm talking about. If you ask me, you Mandalorians just got what you deserved at Malachor. Defeat is part of a warrior's life. We will recover, stronger than before. Doesn't it even bother you that your people were almost destroyed? Or do lives have no meaning to you? People die in war. Well, I'm glad to have you guarding my back. Fine by me.
Mandalore. I have reclaimed Mandalore's helmet, lost after our defeat at Revan's hands. Assemble the rest of your clan. You will return to Duxon. We must come together as we were before and prepare to fight a new war. A war that will return us to glory. And if I take that helmet from you, guess that makes me the new Mandalore. I've always wanted to be called that. I know all about your exploits, Mandalore. We have fallen far in the past years, but even still, I will not stand idly while a usurper claims to be my leader. It is unfortunate that you feel that way. Perhaps I'll be able to change your mind. We'll see about that. I heard you were resp- I still got some Jedi junk left. Oh, certainly. Save Jorah. Back again, huh? I don't know what more I... But it's nice to see you again. Jiren says you saved him down there. Next time you should ask him. If you've got some time, I'd like to see what I can upgrade for you. Yes, I do have a few moments to spare for your work. I would like to know what he is doing here, though. He helps me out with repairs. That isn't a problem, is it? I suppose not. Perhaps in working on my circuitry, your assistant will learn something about how a fully functional droid is constructed. Just ignore him and let's get to work. I would appreciate that. Our group has little in the way of time to spare, and I would not want to delay you from your other duties. Right. Let's get you open. See what you can do. I have to say, you are put together quite well. <laughs> there wasn't much to do. As I told you, my design is streamlined and efficient, though I am pleased that you were able to make some improvements, and this was not just a waste of my valuable time. There were a few things from my remote that I was able to integrate into your construction. I see. Well, thank you. I'll let you get back to your work.
Ready to head back to camp. Give the word and I'll take you there. Follow me then. You received my message then. A man named Kavar wanted to get a hold of you urgently. He said that the Queen had arranged safe passage to Onderon for you. But I don't know how good their offer is anymore. He wouldn't tell me anything. Just that he wanted to see you. He said it was urgent. But that doesn't matter now. This morning, General Vaklu met with the Council of Lords and declared that the Queen was guilty of treason. He'll be made regent if Talia and her royal guard are defeated. The military is divided on who to support. Civil war has fallen on Isis. I doubt that Queen Talia and her advisor will survive until nightfall. The balance of forces seem to favor Queen Talia. The royal palace is heavily fortified and defensible, and most of the soldiers are loyal to her. But Vaklu has new allies, Sith soldiers and their masters. The war has also driven the caged beasts in the streets mad. Braylor and I both concur. She doesn't stand a chance. You underestimate the Force, Mandalorian. I sense that we may still get to Master Kavar in time. I sense there is something stirring on the moon itself. Tell me, have your senses picked up anything from Duxon? Yes. Yes, we have. How? We picked up some transmissions from nearby in the jungle. We only have our shuttle sensors, so we know nothing more than that. Those transmissions are the enemy. They are linked to the fate of Onderon. They must be stopped. Otherwise, the Mandalorian is right. Master Kavar and Queen Talia won't survive this day. Dividing our forces at a time like this is foolhardy. And this is why a common soldier will never triumph against a Jedi. Your military tactics are nothing compared to the Force. It is essential and inevitable that we face both enemies at the same time. You... you are correct. You must choose. Who will lead the expedition through the jungle to find our enemies and defeat them? I shall do my best. You should send two others to go with the leader. Who else will accompany the expedition? Yes, good choice. And who else? Fine. Now, are you certain of your choices? Mandalorian warriors will go with you to find the enemy camp. Just let me know when you want to head out. If you need supplies, talk with Kex. After you get into the jungle, you might not have another opportunity to stock up. Let me know if you want to go now. As you wish. Mandalore has arranged for special transportation to get to Isis. Finally, we're close to our objective. I sent the rest of my men to secure the trail behind us. My troops will keep the path to the Mandalorian camp clear. Ahead lies the enemy. I can follow you a little bit further, but then I will set up command and control for my unit in the field. So lead on.
Type 2 Perimeter Motion Relay. That particular model has several security vulnerabilities and design flaws. Stealth field generators can fool them. If one of us could get close to it, I know the corporate override code for it. Amateurs shouldn't even bother building security technology. So, you aren't completely ignorant in the ways of battle? Good. But all of you must pass through its perimeter, and undetected would be better. Avoid the mines. If any of the ones close to the sensor are detonated, then we shouldn't even bother. Intruders, kill them! This is my first day on Duxon. My predecessor displeased our masters. Dealt with. The fool let Canox through the perimeter. The Sith don't tolerate any failure. I'm the fifth captain to command this base camp. The camp sits in the shadow of a... We don't know why we're here. We're signing off. This jungle feels similar to Korriban before it fell after the war. We're, we're expecting more Sith signing.
Coded messages from orbit and from Bondarok. They're on full battle alert against what they will. What the only the Sith said soon we'll have reinforcements signing up.
Progress. The Sith's camp lies in ruins. I told Kelborn of your progress. The rest of your squad is already en route to Isis. Also, Kex checked our sources for any information about this place. Kex believes that this is the tomb of Freedon Nad. We knew it was somewhere on this moon. We had no idea how close it was to our camp. Uh, some sort of fallen Jedi. He conquered Onderon long ago and became their king. The royal line is directly descended from him. That part of Onderon history the citizens try to leave buried and forgotten. Freedon Nad was a dark Jedi. The stories say he was far worse than Revan and Malak ever were. This place is tainted, and the Sith presence here makes the danger great. I am returning outside. My attention is required to keep the path to our camp clear. The time for practice is over. There are intruders in the tomb and they cannot be allowed to reach our master. The ritual must not be interrupted. I don't need to mention the price of failure. Men, follow me.
Thank you. 